that as a, a drug is moving through the clinical trials process, it's really under the purview of the Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA here in the U.S. Um, that's looking at each step, making sure that it's achieving its goals and ensuring that it's safe. Um, so you were saying, though, that with all the barriers that might preclude someone from participating, that there might, you know, what other options do these patients have? Sure. So there are two pathways that are available to patients that will enable them to get products for treatment use, investigational products, right. before they've been approved for marketing by FDA um, outside of a clinical trial and for their own treatment use. One is called expanded access, and that's a pathway that's been in existence for a couple of decades. The way that works is a doctor and patient will kind of figure out mm -hmm. that the patient has exhausted their approved treatment options, there's no good clinical trial that they're eligible for and able to enroll in, and so they'll think, what else can we do? Maybe there's an investigational product that looks yeah. promising for this patient. Then the next step would be to go to the company and say, will you provide access to this, right. to this product? If the company says yes, the next step would be to go to FDA mm -hmm. and say, we have a patient who is interested in a product. We have a company that's willing to provide it. FDA, um, does this patient satisfy the eligibility right. criteria? And then FDA has to decide, are the risks and benefits um, appropriate for this patient to try this unapproved product? Have they really exhausted all of their other alternatives? Will this interfere mm -hmm. with clinical development? And that's a really important thing that FDA is looking for. They don't want to say yes to patients if it would prevent the product from getting through clinical trials because the way to benefit the most patients is right. to get those trials done and, and have the product be approved by FDA. So typically, by the time you get to FDA, though, it's become clear that you are eligible. And FDA says yes in 99% of the cases for new drugs that, that are being requested um, through this expanded access pathway. Even though it says yes almost all of the time, it does have some information about these investigational drugs that's important for patient safety. Right. So it's helpful to have the FDA involved in that process. If FDA says yes, there's one more thing that you have to do, and that's have an institutional review board, which is typically responsible yeah. for approving research. They then have to sign off um, and say, yes, this is an appropriate use of this product for this patient. I mentioned this other pathway, right? Yeah. There's a newer pathway called Right to Try. The big difference between expanded access and Right to Try is that if you take the Right to Try pathway, you don't go to FDA for authorization and you don't need that institutional review board approval. So there's some perception that it's maybe an easier pathway, mm -hmm. um, a more streamlined pathway. But remember, I told you FDA says yes almost yeah. all of the time and it has some really important right. information. So many bioethicists and others um, we're pretty critical of the right to try pathway. It did get passed about a year and a half ago at the federal level, and 41 states have right to try laws of their own. Really, at this point, fewer than 10 patients have been publicly reported as gaining access through the federal right to try pathway, whereas thousands of patients, typically, um, you know, on the on the order, I believe FDA is getting um, around 1,500 to 1,800 requests per year. So expanded access is is affecting many more patients than Right to Try has. Right. So it sounds like, you know, they're, everybody's playing on the same team here. You know, we want to help as many people as possible, you know, while still, you know, trying to get that, that gold standard of care. It is this trade-off, right, um, about getting products to patients as quickly as possible, but also making sure that we have the data that will indicate whether those things are truly safe and effective. Um, I recognize, of course, that patients who have terrible diseases might have a different risk right. tolerance, right? They might be willing to accept less data um, or higher, you know, higher risks of adverse events, for example. Um, but making sure that we don't sacrifice the ability to figure out whether these products work is, is really important.